Hey, welcome back. Good morning. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10 now, verse 10 through 15. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel was afraid to tell Eli the vision. So God called Samuel, he went to Eli, Eli said, no, I didn't call you. So he went back, he called him again, Samuel, he went back to Eli and he said, you did call me. And Eli said, no, it wasn't me. Eli recognizes that it might be God doing something. And he says, go back and if he calls you again, say to him, your servant is listening, Lord, what do you want me to do? So that's the instruction. We picked it up right here. The third time the Lord calls and Samuel says, here I am. So God is delivering a very stern message through his servant, Samuel, uh, about the house of Eli. Eli and Hophni and Phinehas, his children, and the priesthood there is corrupt. The children are very corrupt. And so God is sending judgment on them. Why would he judge? Why would he judge so severely Eli and, and his house? Well, it's pretty clear to us. It's back down here in verse 15. I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. This isn't a confusion. It's not like a, a point in dispute. Eli knows there's error. He knows there's, there's actually gross sexual sin and other errors going on here. Eli knows about it, and he has uh, talked, but he hasn't acted beyond talking. Sometimes we Christians, we, we talk pretty good, but we don't act beyond the words. And when we don't act beyond the words, God's judgment can come against us because we've got to do more than, than just chatter. God wants his kingdom to, to be manifest in actual uh, living out the truth. Eli didn't live out the truth. He didn't cause his children to live out the truth. Notice again what we had at verse 13 as it went on. The iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile, and he, Eli, he, he did not restrain them. And so he's very much aware, but he doesn't restrain them, and because of that, boom, here comes judgment. So he's going to send this message to reinforce it, he already talked, in a way, to Eli about it, but now he reinforces it by sending it through Samuel. And poor young Samuel, he's, he's caught there. He's got these corrupt priests above him in authority, and he's right there working in that space, and uh, he doesn't have a lot of good examples there, And but he's trying to be pure and faithful, and we see that in all of his behavior. He's, he's spot on all the time. Now God sends him a very firm message. What can we learn from this firm message? Although Samuel doesn't want to share this because what's Eli going to do? He is, he's going to share it anyway. We'll see that tomorrow morning. But he was faithful even though he didn't feel like being faithful. Another thing we notice here is that when you're knowing what's wrong, you need to act on it. Yes, it's true. Eli was a very old guy. His sons were younger and vigorous, but he should have dealt with them and God would have sustained him. But he didn't put it to the test. Instead, he was just all chatter. So in terms of being faithful to God, we've got to avoid the chatter business. At least we've got to go beyond chatter, and we've got to actually do what's right. Eli didn't do what's right. Now there's going to be a, a very severe price to pay. Let's pray about it. Dear Father in heaven, we are very much like Eli. We have a tendency to talk, talk about what's right, but then, but then not to follow it up. And so we ask you, Lord, to help us, give us give us more courage, more boldness, but not only to speak it, but actually to act upon it and set things right in your order. So, Lord, bless your people. Help us to be right servants in your work. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you today as you serve him and as you go beyond the lips to the acts.